Hello, this is Lolly. I am back to show you this kind of fun little project I came up with. This is also from another crafty dream I had. Those of you who are familiar with me know that sometimes I have crafty dreams or what I call dream crafting. So I decided to play with it. So what this is, is a toilet paper tube like this. And I'm, I flattened it out and made it into a tag and with a tag on the inside. But the difference is it's elasticized. Okay, so what I did, um, other than flattening this out, I used a six inch pad, and this one is by We Are Memory Keepers. It's called Friends Forever. It's about dogs and cats. And then I went to Joann's and I got this Dritz 3 8 inch lightweight clear elastic. So that's what I'm using for my elastic on the inside. I got to thinking about sometimes when you buy clothing, um, it comes with these little clear elastic straps on the shoulders so you can loop them over your hanger. And I got to think about that. I would like to have one that's even narrower um, because I think it'd be easier to pull on than this one is. But you'll also notice this is at rest. It really sticks out a little bit anyway, and that way it's not quite as hard to pull. And then if you want it all the way in, you could just push it. Okay, so let's get this flattened. And sometimes when you do this, you'll notice that the toilet paper tube kind of um, unravels a little bit, like in these seams here. Just glue them down with your paper glue. And one of the things I want to do is get a little notch in here like I did in this one. And so I'm going to measure this. So it's one and a half inches across. So at about one and a quarter, I'm going to use a three quarter inch punch. Just a little bit. And then it'll make it easier when I put the paper on there. And so for the paper, all I need to do is measure. This is four and a quarter inches long. So I'm gonna take a sheet here and cut it at four and a quarter. This one's cute, it's cats. I think I'm going to do that one. So let's do it at four and a quarter, but I want my pattern to be this way. So I need to turn it and the four and a quarter will be, that's uh, right there. And yes, that's the right length. Then all I need to do is glue it on here and then wrap it around and glue it in the back. But what I think I'm going to do, move this aside here. You get a piece of scrap paper underneath here. I'm going to use my Scotch Tacky glue. Place that down in the center here. I know you can't tell, but I can um, because of the white on white paper here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little score right in here and right in there so that I really get a good fold in there. And I'm going to put the glue right up against there. takes a lot of glue because these toilet paper tubes are um, very absorbent. So I'm really creasing it well and then folding it over. And I can tell I didn't really get a good, um, I didn't get it on there quite straight. So I'll just trim down the excess. I see got a tiny little bit of tear here. Alrighty. And same thing here. And so what you can do if you really want to um, crease it well, too, is to use the binder clips on it. Now, I am going to do a little bit of trimming because I didn't get my paper on there straight. But I'm also going to cover the bottom with a strip, so I'm not too worried about that. There. Okay. Now, remember I had that thumb notch, so I want to look in here and get that again. I just remember it was kind of hard punching through the paper and the toilet paper. You could also distress your edges if you would like. Okay, nice and crisp. So now I want to find 
the two things I want on the inside is the saying sentiment and uh, some paper to go on the inside. And so there's a lot of cute little sentiments. This is what I used on the inside of the other one, and I still could. It's just paw prints, and it's not double-sided paper, but I had some really cute sentiments. Here we go. So don't hate me because I'm perfect. I love cats. Meow. The more I see, I'm going to do a cat one. Spoiled cat lives here. Let's do the perfect one. And then on this one, the actual card that I glued it onto was two and a quarter by three. So I'm going to trim that down again, two and a quarter by three. So this is already set at three. So now let's turn it sideways and do the two and a quarter. And I did do a double sided. So let's do another two and a quarter. We're going to do two of them. And when I attached the... Um, elastic I'm going to put it between the two layers so I will go ahead and use a corner rounder for this okay I'm going to use the chomper here and I'm using the quarter inch Let's see if I can get both these done at the same time so that would be that and on the other one I actually I put a border across here to make it look a little more interesting and I'll do that as well so that was cut it two and a quarter I'm going to center this a little lower because I want to do my hole at the top. And this little bone is so adorable. And what that is, is an eyelet from Eyelet Outlet that I got at Stamp and Scrapbook Expo last year. It is so adorable. So, that's something on my paper there. Okay, let's get my pencil back out here. And I said this was two and a quarter, so I want to mark this at one and one eighth. But I need to move it further back. Okay. Alrighty. So I want the smaller of the two. This punch right here. This is the crocodile. And just lay that bone down in there. Actually, what I'm going to do, that's right, I want to do the eyelet through both of these at the same time. So let's get them both. There we go. Now when I glue those back to back, I'll be able to put the, I still didn't do a really good job there. Let me try again. There we go. Now it's perfect. But first I want to get the elastic in there. So what I did, I'm going to cut myself off a generous piece here. It's probably about six, seven inches. And I want this to be permanently attached. So let me move this so you can see. I want it to be permanently attached inside here on this card like that. But I, because I don't, there's going to be a lot of tension pulling on it. So I am going to use, I'm going to use this, the Super Tight uh, Multi-Grab 360. You're supposed to put it on both surfaces, let it set for two minutes, and then apply. And then put the two pieces together. So I'm just going to kind of mark where the center is. Oops, that's generous. I don't need that much. So what I'm going to do is share that between these two by touching them together. There we go. And because I live in Colorado, um, the air pressure is different here. So glues tend to really goop out frequently until I've opened them several times and used them. So I'm just kind of dipping this in the glue, both sides. I don't need too much. So I'm just wiping off the excess. And I'm going to wait two minutes before putting this together and then um, pushing them together and holding them. Okay, so it's been two minutes, so I'm going to take this, lay it over the first one, 
just kind of attach that. It's already pretty gummy. And then what I need to do is to glue uh, the rest of my paper together before applying the back. And even though I messed up on punching the hole in the back here, it will be covered up by the bone right there, so I'm not too worried about it. Make sure I get that lined up. There we go. And now I'm going to squeeze this for 30 seconds. Now I'm pushing on it. Like I said, it was grabbing right away. I noticed it was pretty successful there in its hold. Wiping off the excess right now because I don't want it sticking anywhere else. It's just rubbing off, kind of like rubber cement. And if you don't want to hold it, you can always put your binder clip on it like that. So we can do that. And while that's um, setting up, I will work on getting this in here. So let's put the bone in here. I know it's a dog bone, even though this is a little cat. But I don't think I have any um, cat paws. Okay. There we go. It's very cute. <laughs> so cute. Okay. And while we're that setting, let's also work on this. We want to put some sort of a band across here like I did on this one. So that means I'm bound to have some striped paper left over from when I did that one. Just trying to get it all organized here. And there is the polka dot one, which I used on the other one. That's adorable. But there's also the stripey one, which I think I'll go with. So how many stripes do I want? Uh, ba -bum. I think I'm going to go up to this brown line right there. And glue it right across the front here. I'm not too particular because I know it's all going to get glued around. I think I'm going to do the brown, the heavy brown at the bottom. Okay. Flip it over and do what I did before. A little bit of a score. A little bit of a score. Make sure you clean your bone folder when you do that. Now I'm getting that glue right up under that fold there. Okay, so I'm putting all the um, the crease lines, or excuse me, or the overlap lines in the back, but I could have for this, for the front, overlap this in the front since it's going to get covered with one of these sentiments. Okay, so here's the I Love Cats, the meow. Let's use the meow. They're so cute. Now, um, but I guess as a set, these little cards are really cute together. Okay, and now for the bottom. Um, this does not reach full uh, permanency for 24 hours, so I would not be pulling on this right away, just so you know. So I'm going to lower this elastic in there. There we go. And I want it to be about here, which is about an inch and a half, I think, sticking out. No, it's an inch, just an inch sticking out. That's fine right there. But I'm going to wait. Um, now let me think. I'm, it's been a while since I made my first one, so I'm trying to think here. I think what I did, um, I went ahead and cut it off in advance. And I'm going to leave a little tail there. I think that's going to be the safest thing yet. But then I'm going to slide it to the side so it's not in my way. And I'm going to put the glue. Let me find one of these. There. And now I can add the glue in here on the top and bottom. In this case, I'm not actually going to get the glue on the end, but I can do it pretty soon. 
Just let that set for a minute. Oops, and it just occurred to me I skipped a step. I'm going to pull this back out because one of the things I want to do to give this a real good reinforcement is to staple right over there with the tiny attacher. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this out now and squeeze, put it where it belongs and squeeze it together. There we go. While that's setting, I am going to put this in the hole here. Put the loop through and then fold it over the top and over the two ends like that. There we go. Okay, now all we need to do here is the same thing. I'm going to staple right over that. If this is not strong enough, I will just go to my uh, regular staple. And then because this staple is showing from the outside, I want to cover that with a thin little strip of that stripey paper. Here it is. And this just covers that staple up for me. Now again, I would let this dry for a good, or set up for a good 24 hours so that I'm not tugging on that elastic. Even though I do have staples in there, I want to give it every opportunity to be a really good permanent hold. Trim off any excess you got sticking out. And that's it. So I'm not going to pull on it now. But if you also want to put some embellishments on the outside, you can. I found these plastic or resin sort of hearts at the thrift store a while ago. And so I had used those on that. And I have a couple more. I'm going to put these on opposite corners and let them set. Again, you don't need a big wad. I've got too much down. Um, I've got too much down here. I'm gonna wipe off the excess. I'm just gonna use this little piece of ribbon to pick up the excess right here. I'm gonna wait two minutes and then put these hearts down. And then also in the meantime, we can talk about what on earth you would use this for, because I know I'm going to get asked that question, right? <laughs> what would you use this for? So I am describing it as a tag, but it's actually a tag within a tag. And you could also write on the back. This alone could be a freestanding card, not a standing, it doesn't stand, but I mean, it could be a card, by, a greeting card by itself for a loved one. So you could, you know, put their name on the front. You could write a little greeting on the back, however you want to do that or use it in any other way you would a tag. You can actually hang it this way from a package. Um, the other thing I was thinking about was we make a lot of crafts in which we have pockets, uh, like journals and, you know, et cetera, flip books. This would be a good pocket stuffer for some, something like that. Just a cute little reminder, or, you know, maybe it's someone that really needs a lot of encouragement, and you don't have to do a dog or a cat theme, but you can always do something that's just encouragement to tell the person how special they are. And this could be a, you know, a good purse size uh, item to put for them to carry around to remind them of you and of your love for them. So there are a few other things you can use them for. And if you have any other ideas, leave them in the comments down below. Okay, so I waited and then now I'm going to put this on there. I don't know that I need my tweezers. I don't think I do. Now, since I'm going to be setting this aside anyway, I'm not worried that these hearts might not um, set up properly. So here are the two of them. And again, I can't pull this one out all the way yet until it has had its chance to uh, be permanently adhered. But there they are. They are so adorable. And if you have any cute little eyelets you can use, you can use a regular eyelet or no eyelet at all. Um, but I just thought they were so fun. And another use for items you have around the house, scrap papers, because what a great way to use your scrap papers and use those six inch pads. 
I tend to collect six inch pads, I think, because I think they're easy to store, but now I have a lot of them. So there they are. Let me get this out of the way so you can finally see them in their glory. And thank you for watching.